everybody, my name is Tiffany and I'm the Tipsy Artist and today we are painting our beautiful Audrey Hepburn. She is a classic and she always has a wonderful positive message so hopefully she will help us relax and succeed. Alright so this is our beautiful new what I call a DIY canvas. It comes to you shipped in the mail so all this line art is done for you on the canvas and then all you have to do is have fun and paint with me and I'm going to teach you how so you've got this wonderful online video to teach you how to paint and then of course you've got all the line work done so it always makes it super super easy all right so to get started let's talk about supplies a little bit which of course are always in you know like below with your little uh, description there but I'm going to do a little visual rundown so we've got your lovely brushes here I've got a flat big daddy and then I've got mommy mama then I've got little buddy and then little bit and then I've got either uh, you know you can use paper towels or a rag and then water and then paint and then you know just get some paper plates and stuff like that so that'll help out a lot all right and then all the paints are listed below too and then of course we've also got a canvas painting kit too if you want to buy that from us we would love it. <laughs> helps us, helps you. All right, let's all help each other. Okay, now to get started, we're gonna get started with our background color first. So I want to use a bigger brush to do that larger area there, and I'm gonna teach you how to mix up a color. You can do just a really pretty um, light cream color, or you can do a turquoise color. Uh, so that's just up to you. I'm gonna keep it kind of light and neutral today. Uh, so I'm going to be taking a nice big dollop of the white and then just a little tiny touch of some gold. Okay, so this gold looks a little bit like some mustard there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and push that through. Just mix up a nice amount of cream there, just a, a nice light neutral. And then if you'd like this to be a little bit cooler, um, then you can add just a teeny amount of black. So let me show you what that looks like here too. Go ahead and do a little bit there. All right. So just super tiny amount of black there. And then push that into the mix. So that'll give you a cooler gray tone that can mix in there too. Really lovely. So it makes it a little bit more of like a, a taupe color. And then light gray is always an option too. So if you just want to keep it really simple and do like a white and a black for a light gray, that's also really awesome. And I always like to keep a lot of just pure white off to the side for my blending there. So I'm going to keep this color again, just very light and bright and neutral. And then I'm going to start to paint this into the background here. So I'm going to do my little, my classic little cross stroke where I make sure I've got my paintbrush loaded up nicely with paint. Then I'm going to go ahead and push this brush onto the surface, hold it parallel to the canvas. This will allow that flat side of the brush to face the canvas and give us really good coverage over the surface here. And just continue to push that down. I like little white highlights in here too as I go, so I'm going to take that little bit of white and just kind of push it back and forth here. All right, so I can move the brush around pretty freely. Now, when I do start to work in around the tinier edges, then I want to go ahead and take my little bit brush here. This is the smallest brush that you've got, okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and work that into the paint. And then I can just hold this just like a pencil. And then I can just work in and around these smaller little shapes in here. Now, um, when I'm working in, doing my cut-in work, I like to just work in with that medium shade of whatever I mixed up. So I'm going to go ahead and work in, just do my cut and work with a smaller brush. Then you can use a larger brush to pull out from there and to work into your background. So for example, I'm going to take my little buddy here and then I've done my cut and work with little bits. So then I'm going to just kind of work that into that larger area. Because you don't want to do all this big area with your little bit brush. No, uh, -uh. just cut and work and then move up to a bigger brush to get you know, a larger area painted in. Place it on its side. That'll give you better coverage when you're working that in. So you're going to be kind of working back and forth with different size brushes. So again, little bit cut in work, little buddy flat side working into those larger areas. And then when you get into you know really big areas in here, then of course you can switch over to your big daddy brush to work into the larger areas. All right, so that is going to be our first step. 
awesome, okay? And one other thing, let me say, uh, when you do your cutting work, if you happen to have a little bit of overlay over the top of your black, here's what is awesome. It will always bleed through, so don't worry about that. Um, you can be a little bit messy if you happen to go over the black, not a problem, because you can always come back in later and you can just do little detail work to kind of help fill back in your black. You can even come back in at the very end with a Sharpie to help tighten it all up beautifully. So absolutely do not be too um, ooh, about, you know, getting around all these edges in a super tight way, because there's a lot of forgiveness with that and it'll bleed through. You can see it, work it in later. All right, so let's just have fun and relax, and we're gonna do all of our background with this lovely neutral color. Here we go. We are back from doing all of our background painting and I just went ahead and got a little sloppy just to show you that um, just easier and just you know have fun relax because I'm gonna come back in with my black later and just show you how you can just relax with that so you know I do my part for y'all I just get sloppy when I need to just for y'all so you know just ah, take a load off relax let that be and then we're going to come back in now with our color blocking. So this is where we do lovely, beautiful, solid color into those shapes that are all beautiful, like for our little flowers and details. And then I went ahead and left her shirt. I know that it is um, historically accurately black, but if you want to give your Audrey a little bit of color and make her have a hot pink shirt, um, for example, then absolutely you should just do that. So that's why I allowed you to have that to kind of play with that a little bit. So that'll be fun. All right, so I'm gonna teach you lots of different colors now. So let's have fun with that. All right, so let's see here. Let's do some pink to begin with. All right, so we've got, all right, red and then white. All right, so let's mix those two together. A little bit of white gives us a beautiful hot pink, and then you come in with a lot of white, and then that gives you a really pretty light baby pink color, All right? And then we've got, let's do turquoise, that's always fun. A little bit of turquoise here. All right, so we've got blue, green, oops, a little more, and some white. So about three equal parts here, blue, green, and white, and then that gives us a beautiful, turquoise and then some light green here for like the leaves quite lovely white green mix that together that gives you a really pretty light light green there awesome all right we've already mixed up we've had a lesson on gray and cream so we won't go over that again uh, let's talk about some purple now if you are having to mix purple at home you are in luck because you can take 
primary colors and do that. So if you, you can buy some or you can mix it. So let's talk about mixing it. So mixing it is a little touch of red and a little touch of blue and that will give you purple. Very pretty. It's not lovely. Alright, now if you add a little bit of white to that, then this gives you lavender. Alright, and then let's do some coral. Alright, coral, dynamite color. I love coral. Okay, so coral is actually orange. People are like, ah, oh, orange, did not know that. Alright, so coral is orange, red, and white. All right, so orange, red, and white is our coral. And let's see, what else? Oh, let's do like a really pretty uh, sunflower color. So you definitely want just a real beautiful, bright lemon yellow. Okay, so we're gonna do some of that. Get it out of there, good job me. Okay, and a little bit of gold. And maybe even a little bit of white too. But I'm going to just start with uh, lemon yellow and gold. So there we go. There is that. Beautiful. All right. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I think that's about all I'm going to do. Um, yeah. All right. So, and if you have questions about other colors, just comment below and I will answer your questions. All right. So here we go. Uh, lots of beautiful colors now to go ahead and paint in with. Now a note about flesh tones, so I personally am not going to do that. I'm going to do an old throwback to the 80s with a Nagel painting, okay? Um, look that up, he's a great artist. You probably are thinking, oh, that's that guy that did all the beautiful black and white, like beautiful faces. And they were very large in scale, but he left the white of their face just white. It's just, I, I just loved it. So for my painting, I'm going to just leave it white it's just so much easier and it's just beautiful so I'm gonna leave her skin tone just a white for the canvas just out of just let's just make this super easy and really fun now if you really want a flesh tone color and you can do any color that you want my suggestion is you need to just go up to the store and get some folk art for whatever color you feel like exactly matches what you want and just if you absolutely stick with just that one color you'll be fine um, because what you don't want to run into is this business of trying to I can teach you how to blend flesh tone the problem is you're gonna a lot of people don't mix up enough and then they run out and then they're trying to push it back in somewhere and then they have all this varying um, look in the flesh tone and it looks really splotchy and it, it kind of looks like maybe she's got a rash or something it's it doesn't it doesn't end well it usually is kind of jacked up usually by the time they get done so let's just avoid all that and just know that I'll and I'll give some recommendations as well on this particular project if you want to do that um, but they have all kinds of different flesh tone colors and many different shades folk art but as long as in that way you get this full tube of one exact color and you know you're never going to run out and even if you go back in and apply it later it's still going to match that's the key just like when you're painting your house and you don't want these this mismatched coloring same thing with flesh tone it's absolutely crucial so just do that and you'll be fine now when you do start to paint into all these tiny little shapes this is definitely the world of one you know technique and it's just a lot of holding the brush just like you'd hold a pencil just like this to get in those little areas and you're really just going to be using your little kiddos you know from here on out so little buddy little bit you know just hold them like a pencil work into those small areas like this um, if you do need better coverage over the flat side of the surface then you want to load up that brush and you want to you know instead of holding it like this which you see how it's really transparent and you need a small area but good coverage, then you, you take your brush and you hold it over to the side. All right, you see how magical that is? All I did was take it from holding it like this to holding it parallel to the canvas. All right, so that gave you really good coverage. You can see super dramatic big difference on that. It's just how you hold the brush. All right, so again, like this or like this to get really good coverage over the surface. And then uh, when you're doing like tiny little curves, 
Always remember you got to go in with your little bit liner brush to make those tiny little curves, you know, around the edges and everything. And um, so, little bit, little buddy, flat side of the brush for big areas, you know, little liner brush to get in. Also, one other tip before we just start getting into the painting part, if you do have a little bit of a shaky hand and you're trying to steady it, um, another little trick that I do, show you right here on the plate, I take my pinky and I rest the weight of my hand on my pinky just like that. It just you know serves as a little kickstand for you, it really helps steady those that hand and all your fingers. And then you can do those little tiny like loops or just getting around those little corners and those little shapes in there. So that's just a handy little tip as well. Also, when you want to load up your brush and you want to get you know a nice fine point to get into those smaller areas, uh, take your little bit brush, do a little twist. So twist it between your fingertips. See how I'm doing that? All right, so that will load up the brush, but it also twists your brush into a really nice fine point. Very helpful. All right, so here we go. We're going to paint in a lot of detail now. Alright, so I'm going to take a quick break and talk about how I'm starting to cut in and do a lot of the black detail work. I'm going to give that a little pause. I've decided to go ahead and do her shirt black. But before I do that, I don't want, I want my black to be the very last thing that I do um, because I still have to work in detail work over the flowers, uh, the light brights over the roses to get that pattern work done. That's another technique I have to teach you. And then once we get that done, then we can just shift gears to just black outlining um, for a while. So you can either do that with paint or even just do it with a Sharpie too. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about some of the details on the rose. All right, so I'm going to, I'm actually going to show you on a plate because it's just so much easier. You can see it up close. So we've got all these roses happening here and we have some pattern work that we need to do over the top. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do just a nice base of red. So I've got my rose shape, a little bit more red here. Alright, so I've got a red base here for my rose shape. And again, our roses are just essentially like a shape of a lumpy circle to begin with. So I'm making this a lot larger so that you can see the technique that I'm doing. All right, so that's my base. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in with my little bit brush. Let's do that. There we go. So I need, as my first layer over the rose, I need white. All right, so I've got a little bit brush, white paint, and the basic stroke here is you're going to start with just one parenthesis. And we're going to keep doing that all the way around this rose in a circular pattern. Then we're going to bring that towards the inside. And just kind of vary it a little bit. Again, just that little, you know, parenthesis shape and see how that's really starting to look like an abstract rose. That's pretty cool. All right, so that's our first step. Uh, then we're going to do just a little bit of a darker shade here in the middle. So for me, this is just that dark red again. I'm going to do just a little spot right there in the center. 
Then I'm going to push this back in, get a soft blend with that white, and push that around. Just those little, like parentheses, half circles again. And then sometimes what I have to do is I have to come back in with one more layer of white. So it's the same pattern again, just a little bit white and just kind of just do that little, you know, half circle or like it, it just like a parenthesis, just push that around in that circular pattern. Just kind of vary that all the way around. And then there is our beautiful rose. Okay, so we're gonna do that on all these tiny little roses in here. And the formula is the same every time, no matter the color. Okay, you use your smallest brush, just a little bit, and then you do your white, you know, just your little parentheses in a circular pattern, first layer. Then you come in with the darkest color on there, do a little spot right there in the center. That's your shadow in the middle of the rose. And then you do just a few little of the darkest color. Uh, which in here that would have been that red. If you, if you were doing lavender, you would have come in with purple. Um, you know, a light white rose, you'd come in with gray or a little bit of gold. All right, so, and then, um, then you kind of finish back up with a few more little white, you know, around, just that circular pattern around there. And you can practice on your plate a little bit, just like I've done here. So that is the technique. So that's gonna be what we're gonna work on next. So go ahead and get that done. Then I will just be coming back in with lots of black outlining. So we've got all that messy stuff I have to go back and kind of fix up and correct. And then just little bits of black outline. And of course, I'm going to go ahead and just fill in her little shirt here with black. So here we go. All right, we are done. We're done. It's, it's, I'm, I'm super pleased. I think she is absolutely beautiful. So the only thing I still have left is my lovely signature. And you do have my permission to Sharpie because, man, that's a little tiny signature. So, you, you know, you just want to go ahead and have fun with it. And I'm going to go ahead. And, it's just so easy. Boom. Love it. Okay. And there's still, you know, there might be a little bit of tweaking, uh, fine tuning I want to do. Sharpie is really the way to go because you're getting into some really delicate, you know, areas with the face and the lettering. And again, anything you want to do that's really small with the black, man, this is the way to go. So I highly recommend the black Sharpie when you're finishing up. But here's our Audrey Hepburn. She is beautiful. We're so excited. And again, if you're just now catching some of the details, please know that we ship this as a DIY canvas to you right to your door. All the line art is on the canvas, so that is a beautiful thing. So that is available uh, to you for you, uh, tipsyartist.com. So we have the details below, but please check that out. She is absolutely lovely. And we just thank you so much for joining us today. We look forward to doing our next project with you. Have a beautiful and blessed day. Mm -hmm.